Hey weirdos, um, I'm here voicing for Factsverse on YouTube today, and uh, this new script just looked so weird darkness-like that I thought I'd go ahead and just uh, make a real quick video of me narrating this script. I've not read the entire thing, I've only seen the, uh, the title of it, so I'm starting there. But it's the true story behind The Conjuring, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how this goes, and I thought maybe you'd enjoy just watching it as it as it unfolds when I narrate it. So here we go. Factsverse presents The true story behind The Conjuring is even creepier than the movie. Before we get into this video, how about you creep us out? Click that like button. Also be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss our future videos. Most people will say that The Conjuring is one of the best horror films of the 21st century, and one of the reasons for this is that it is said to be based on a true story. The movie takes place in the 1970s, when the Perrin family bought a home in a small town in Rhode Island. What happened after the family moved in is what a good horror movie is made of. Unfortunately for the family, everything that occurred in this movie happened to them in real life. The true story behind The Conjuring is even creepier than the movie itself. When the parents moved into their new house, everything seemed normal at first. The only strange occurrence was the neighbors met them for the first time and said, for the sake of your family, leave the lights on at night. Well, it wasn't long after the family understood why their neighbors gave them such a warning. According to one of the neighbors, Cynthia, small things were happening, but it wasn't anything to become worried about. She'd noticed that things would be moved to a different spot than where she had left them. Sometimes she would see things shoved underneath the bed that she never put there. She'd ask her sisters if they moved her things, and each time they said no, they didn't. Well, shortly after the family moved into the farmhouse, the ghosts seemed to be kind. Five children were living in the home, and according to Andrea, one of the older children, the ghosts acted like their caretakers. Each night after they'd gone to bed, the ghosts would tuck them in and kiss their foreheads. Cynthia and Andrea also remembered the way that the ghosts smelled. Their mother often smelled like ivory soap, and when they'd get a kiss in the middle of the night, they smelled fruit and flowers. They knew it wasn't their mother kissing them. The family wasn't really concerned about the friendly ghosts in the house. It wasn't until the parent girls began seeing frightening entities that they began to worry. One night the girls were in the barn when a ghost told them about bodies in the walls. Andrea says that one night Cindy climbed into her bed talking about dead bodies in the walls, but it wasn't Cindy's voice. Andrea says that she sounded as if she were possessed. Later Cindy told Andrea that the ghosts told her that there were seven dead soldiers buried in the walls. The next strange occurrence started at 5.15 a.m., the family would be awoken up by the smell of rotting flesh that would bring each family member out of bed and down the stairs to see what was going on. Andrea claims that around this time she was tortured by a male ghost. She says that it was so bad that she would not give any details about the attack. Things were getting really bad in the Perrin house. The mother Carolyn began having interactions with the ghost herself. She says that when she got out of bed one morning, she saw a woman dressed in gray. She was standing by Carolyn's bed, saying, Get out! Get out! I'll drive you out with death and gloom! It's believed this woman was the ghost of a witch named Bathsheba Thayer. According to Andrea, the ghost believed that she was the mistress of the house and that she was trying to take Carolyn's place. According to the Perrin family, Bathsheba started out harmless, either poking or pinching all the members of the family, but that's about it. But things soon got much worse. Bathsheba wanted them to leave, so she started torturing Carolyn. She would physically assault her, and when that didn't work, she possessed Carolyn. She would cause Carolyn to hurt herself, and her family and Carolyn would be left weak and emotionally drained when the possession was over. Ed and Lorraine Warren were paranormal experts, and they were very well known. When they were speaking in Putnam, Connecticut, which is about 30 minutes from the parents' home, a family friend spoke to them about what the parents were going through. According to Cynthia, it was their friend Barbara who told the Warrens about the family after they gave their lecture. 
As soon as Lorraine heard the stories, she decided she had to go check out the home. When the Warrens first walked into the house, Lorraine said that she felt a dark presence the moment she walked in. First, they tried to cleanse the home. Next, they performed a seance in the family basement. The children were told to stay upstairs, and only Carolyn was in the basement. According to Andrea, she snuck into the basement and she saw her mother speak a strange language in a strange voice. She also said that her mother's chair levitated and she was thrown across the room. This is the story that Lorraine tells as well. Lorraine says that she doesn't like to talk about what happened in the basement that night because it is too frightening. For the next decade, the Warrens visited the parents, but nothing ever changed. In the movie The Conjuring, the children played a hide-and-seek game. One child was blindfolded and had to find the other children by ac One child was blindfolded and had to find the other children by asking them to clap. It was a very scary part in the movie, and according to the parents, that really did happen in real life. The child who was blindfolded would hear the clapping right beside them, only to find that their siblings were in a completely different room. According to Cynthia, the kids were playing a real game of hide-and-seek, and then one day she hid inside of a pine box with no latch or lock of any kind. But when she tried to get out of the box, it wouldn't open. She panicked and remained in the box, terrified for about 20 minutes when finally her sister Nancy opened the box to let her out. Even though ghosts were torturing the family, they had to stay in the house. The economy was bad at the time. If the family left the farm, they would have had no place to go to. Also, there weren't too many people who had enough room in their homes to take in two adults and five children. Well, finally, in 1980, the family was able to sell their 200-acre farm. And as soon as they signed the papers, they moved to Georgia and never looked back. When the movie was being filmed, the whole family was invited to the set. Carolyn changed her mind about going at the last minute, though, and decided to stay home. Andrea did go, and she says that while the family was being interviewed, a wind swept over the family, knocking down the lights and cameras around them. Later that night, they found out that at the same time the wind swept over them, their mother fell at home and broke her hip. The family claims that Carolyn told them that it was the witch's curse, and she didn't want them to expose her. According to Andrea, everyone who has lived in the house after the parents, they have all had frightening experiences as well. Many, she says, have left screaming and running for their lives, leaving their belongings behind. She also says that the owners of the adjacent property say the house sat vacant for years. The current owner is Norma Sutcliffe. She says that she has heard footsteps, seen a strange blue light, and heard people talking in other rooms. When the movie was released, people started showing up at her home and she became very unhappy with all the attention she was getting. Soon, she denied these claims and tried to disprove the parents' story, just to get a little peace and quiet. In the film, the witch was said to have sacrificed her baby to the devil before hanging herself in the Rhode Island farmhouse. In reality, though, Bathsheba was a normal woman with a husband and four children. It was back in the 19th century and three of the children died young which was common for kids back then, unfortunately. Bathsheba died of a stroke in 1885. She was not a witch or a Satan worshiper. Subscribe for more. And Happy Halloween!